Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the pandas rolling method, and the rolling method can be used to sort of automate a fairly tedious uh, group of calculations, uh, one of which is the moving average, which I'll be demonstrating, and uh, then a rolling standard deviation. It can also be used to calculate other rolling window aggregations. I'm going to be using pandas 0.21 and um, I'm going to make the notebook, I'm using Jupyter Notebook, I'm going to make it available at a link in the video. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is sort of set up our environment. Uh, I'm going to import NumPy. Pandas relies on NumPy, so even though I'm not going to use it too much directly, uh, we need it to make Pandas work. All right, I am going to also get the uh, Pandas data reader. Uh, and uh, I'm going to plot a little bit of this so we can see what's going on. So I'm using a matplotlib and uh, I'm using the magic function so that it shows uh, in the notebook. All right, so I'm going to run this cell. And to run a cell in, in the notebook, right, you can click the, the run button up here, or it's probably easier to hold the shift key and press enter. All right, and then the next thing we're going to do is uh, get some data and I'm going to get the gold ETF. I'm going to download that using the Pandas Data Reader. All right, and I'm going to uh, get it from Yahoo Finance. All right, so all it really needs is uh, the symbol. All right, but if, uh, if I don't tell it where to start, uh, then it will probably give me more data than I want. So I'm going to go back to, we might as well go back to, uh, the day of the presidential election. All right, get some data from about uh, a year ago. All right, and then uh, just so we can see what we got, I will display the first few lines of that. So we'll go ahead and get it. And so we can see, uh, you know, the typical historical data that you get from Yahoo Finance, uh, price action of the day and, and volume. Okay. All right. Uh, all we are really interested in for this demonstration is the uh, the closing prices. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of everything else. All right. And since the data frame that this gets downloaded into uh, is a series of series, uh, and they don't really have all the properties I want, I'm going to have to cast cast this as a data frame. All right, so with that done, we're ready to go ahead and start our demonstration of the rolling method. All right, and so what I'm going to do is add a column to the uh, to the data frame I just made, and and this is why I made it a data frame because I, I can't really do this with a series. A series is a is a one a sort of a one dimensional array. So I'm going to call this one M A. Nine, so we'll get a, a nine day moving average, all right? And so this is a pretty uh, convenient way to add columns. All right, so I'll just take the close variable, I'll get the close column, all right, and then I'll hang the rolling method off the end of it, all right? So this is the most basic usage of it, all right? So I just give it uh, the number uh, of periods or rows that I want uh, to include in my aggregation, all right, and I will get the average there. All right, so I'm going to do that twice, all right, so we can compare a short window to a longer one. Okay, so we now have two new columns in here, and to prove it, we're going to go ahead and graph that, okay, and uh, down here, I'm sort of, in the interest of time, I have set up the, the plot parameters here, so we're going to make a fairly large plot, we're going to turn on the grid lines, uh, we're going to plot the close, the 9-day moving average, and the 21-day moving average, all right, and so I'll go ahead and run that cell, and uh, we can see what happened to gold, uh, uh, you know, following uh, 
the presidential election and then uh, leading up until um, the most recent the recent days okay all right so these are the the moving averages and I and I showed you the most basic usage all right uh, another thing sometimes you want to do is is lag these uh, these averages all right so I'm gonna add a parameter here and the parameter I'm gonna add is center and I'm gonna tell it to be true so this will basically it's a 21 period moving average so this will calculate the 21 day and then uh, start uh, it'll, it'll roll it back uh, 10 days uh, so that you get sort of a lagged line all right so we'll be able to see that when I regraph it all right so when we regraph this we can see that now uh, the green line which is the longer moving average uh, has just been shifted back and it's basically instead of uh, being smoothed and pushed over to the right it's now sort of coincident with with the data that it's representing okay all right so that's sort of the most basic uh, lagging activity you can do with a uh, with a moving average now I should just sort of mention that when you do the moving average you are including the uh, the most current observation in your average right so to show you what I mean by that I'll add a cell here okay and then I will look at the nine day moving average all right and uh, I'll get sort of 12 rows so we can see what's going on here all right so uh, if we look at it you can see that okay there are uh, eight blanks and then on the ninth one that's where we get the moving average so we're actually including the closing price from uh, 1118 there all right and you may not want to do that if you want to use this as sort of a traditional uh, forecasting tool all right then we will have to shift this forward all right and so I'm gonna hang the shift method off it and by default it's one but I could put any integer value in here that I wanted all right and then when I uh, show this again we see that oh, okay uh, now we get you know nine uh, nine days in our average all right but I've shifted it forward one day all right so it looks like the 18th was a Friday uh, so the next day uh, was the Monday on the 21st all right so there's there are other there are other parameters you can use in the in the rolling method okay so I showed you uh, center uh, you could set any lag you want. In fact, if you wanted to uh, lag it some other way other than uh, on the center, I can put a negative integer in here and then roll it all the way back to, uh, you know, to be the uh, on the first day if I want. All right, so one more thing I'm going to just uh, show is uh, how to uh, calculate a, a, a volatility uh, that's used in... in uh, usually in pricing options so this is what we'll, we'll uh, call a historical volatility all right so the first thing I'm going to need to do is add another column okay and I'm going to set that equal to uh, the MP log so here I'm, I am actually going to use a uh, numpy here. what I'm going to do is take the close and I'm going to divide it by the previous day's close all right, and then if we just want to see what that sort of looks like, we can plot it. And uh, so we end up with a pretty noisy graph here and it, uh, centered around zero, as you might expect. And uh, we can sort of get a high level view of what, what happens uh, in gold price. All right, so we can see that, okay, uh, there are no days where it goes up more than 2% in this, in this data set. Uh, and there's only one day where it went down by more than 2%. To, to calculate the uh, historical volatility, uh, what's usually done is uh, we use a rolling standard deviation to get that. And, and the number that's often used is the 21-day rolling window. So the 21-day uh, is used because there are 21 trading days in a month on average, all right? So and that adds up to 
252 trading days in a year. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, calculate that as the rolling 21, all right, and then the STD, the standard deviation. All right, and again, this will uh, this will include the 21st observation, all right, and so really uh, the the volatility uh, should be used from the next day, all right? Otherwise, it implies that we know something we don't. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and shift that by one. All right, I'll run that, and then uh, we'll plot that. All right, so when I do that, I get a, a, a different, a sort of a cleaned up version of, uh, of what this volatility uh, looks like over time. All right, so it uh, looks like we just came out of a, a particularly highly volatile period uh, in, in gold. Okay, all right, so in a follow-on video, I will add some, uh, some more basic price analysis uh, that you can do, uh, but for now, I hope that helps with using the rolling method in pandas.